Hi, my name is Jem. Welcome to slash welcome back to my channel. It's been a moment. It's been about two months since I filmed a video. But in my defense, I filmed this particular video like three or four times already. And I just can't get it right. So I've been feeling really dejected, but hopefully this one turns out okay. So anyway, over the duration of February and two from January, I've been collecting a few books. <laughs> I've been buying a lot of books. Uh, so I guess I'll just show you in a little bit. So I guess I'll just show you. I guess I'll just show them to you now. I can't speak. You take two months off of YouTube and you forget how to speak. So starting from the two that I picked up at the end of January, after I finished like my January book haul, um, I got Homegoing by Yagyasi and I got this for like three bucks at my local Savers and a lot of these books that I'm about to show you I got for really good deals at Savers so quite happy with that. Anyway, this is a generational Africana novel. It follows two sisters, Ephaya and Isi, uh, and they go on very divergent paths. One becomes a slave owner's wife, and one gets sold into slavery. So I think it just follows their families and how differently they end up. Very nicely, there is a family tree at the start, which is great. When this first came out, I was intrigued by it, but I think I was still kind of in my young adult stage, and I didn't really think I would pick this up. It's not something that I read a lot of, which is kind of why I want to read it now. It sounds really good, I've heard nothing but rave reviews, and hopefully I get to this one soon. And the second one I got in January at the end was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. Um, so after... So I had been reading a lot of really terrible books prior to buying this. I was just so dejected. I was like, where are all the good books at? Um, and this was in Peru's Project's Top 18 Books of 2018. I saw it for 10 bucks at Kmart and I just snagged it, I just grabbed it, held it close, uh, because I've been really like in the mood for a good middle grade, so I have a feeling that I'm definitely going to read this within like a few months, but I say that about a lot of books, so we'll see. This is a story about a girl called Morgan Crow, and basically whenever something bad happens to her town or the people in it, she is blamed, and it has nothing to do with it, but somehow it becomes all her fault. So I believe she just... Oh, she's cursed! Oh my god, and she's doomed to die at midnight? And then this guy, Jupiter, shows up and he's like, not today, B. Not today. So these next three books I also got at my local Savers and I'm so happy and excited about every single one of them. Uh, the first one I got was Nutshell. It did come with a dust jacket but I'm currently reading this so um, I don't have it on. But this is a, it's by Ian McEwan, I'm not sure if I said that, but it's a book told through the perspective of a fetus. Uh, who is privy to a really, really dark plan by his mother, the fetus's mother, um, because the mother has taken a lover with her husband's brother. That is such a tongue twister. Uh, anyway, I'm like 150 pages in out of 200 pages and I hate this book so far. <laughs> I don't think it's very good. Um, in this point in time, I would give it a one star. But we'll see. It'll be on my Goodreads later. You should follow me there. Am I a YouTuber now? I've just plugged my other sites. I'm a professional. I also got a second Ian McEwan book. Uh, wasn't planned, but here we are. Um, it is Atonement. So I studied the movie of Atonement in conjunction with The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley last year for literature. And I loved both texts. I thought the movie was incredible, it's got Saoirse Ronan in it and I love her, uh, but this follows a girl called Bryony uh, pre-World War II and then throughout World War II and then much after World War II, so it's a uh, linear novel, and it follows Bryony and basically she accuses her sister's lover of a really, really dark crime that he did not commit. 
uh, and it follows her throughout the whole of World War II, dealing with that guilt, going off to be a nurse in the war. Uh, by the end, you find out that she perhaps is not the most reliable narrator. The movie was excellent, so I'm hoping for good things out of this. And the last book I got from that little trip is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Casey, Cassie, Cassie, something of that variety. Um, this, I just, I feel like everybody loves this movie. I have not seen the movie, uh, but this book is really cool. It's got like little illustrations and I have no idea what this is about. I genuinely don't. Um, but I just, isn't it... <laughs> I don't want to say anything just in case I sound really dumb, but I'm pretty sure it's about a man who is in a mental asylum in the 1950s, maybe 60s, and um, there's this tyrannical nurse. <laughs> That's the extent of what I know, and Jack Nicholson's in the movie. So the next uh, four books I got from a discount bookstore. Um, they were originally all $10, but the store is closing down, so they were all six, so I just plucked them all out of thin air. The first one is The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad, so if you watch my Jan wrap up, I think I did a Jan wrap up, but if you watch something where I talked about Heart of Darkness, you'll know that I really, really liked it. I thought it was a very poignant novel, to put it lightly. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I saw this, and it's not something that I would have bought for full price, but I feel like for six bucks, why not? So, again, I don't know much about this, um, and the blurb is really vague. There's been so many trains going through. I've had to, like, wait to film this video, but, like, the trains keep coming through. Anyway, if you hear a train, I live near a set of tracks. Anyway, this is set in the London underworld. Terrorist bombers, spies, grotesques, and fanatics. Yep, sounds up my alley. Um, the thing that really got me was... This page at the front, which all Penguin books of this variety have, um, it's just a quote from the piece, and it's, The terrorist and the policeman both come from the same basket. And I really liked that quote, I thought it was really interesting. So, yeah, I am very interested in picking this up. Sounds pretty good. The next book I got was Hubris by Alastair Horne, The Tragedy of War in the 20th Century. Uh... I love history, I feel like everyone knows that by now, um, but when I saw this I was kind of like, oh should I get it, should I not, like I have a lot of books of this kind of variety, but then I opened the flap and saw that it starts from the Rusto-Japanese War of 1905, um, and literally that day, the day that I bought this, I had just finished the PowerPoint on the Rusto-Japanese War because I studied the Russian Revolution, and so I had just finished the PowerPoint on the Rusto-Japanese War, I was like, it's a sign I have to get it. So just like the title would suggest, it kind of follows all of the kind of humiliating or disastrous but also the tremendous and triumphant wars of the 20th century. It goes from the Russo-Japanese War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. I don't think the Cold War is in this. I think it cuts off just kind of before the Cold War because uh, it's hard to write about the Cold War really. Uh, but yeah, very excited for that. Oh, that was so loud. Second to last. We're getting there. Congratulations on making it this far through, but second to last. The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I bought this. I've just, I've heard really, really good things about it. I own a copy of The Marriage Plot, but have not read it yet. Uh, but yeah, I've just, I really need to get Middlesex because I'm trying to read uh, like all of the Pulitzers. And I have the two Jeffrey Eugenides books that haven't won a Blitzer. I, again, I don't know a lot about this, uh, but I believe it's like a joint narrative. Like five teenage boys tell the story. Maybe I made that up. But I don't know. I think it's... I, do, I don't know. I'm not even going to say anything because I don't know. And the last book I got is kind of the same as Hubris. I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't so inexpensive, but it was Maggie Cassidy by Jack Kuriak. Uh, in my literature class, 
I have my good friend Florence, uh, who I don't think I've ever mentioned. Maybe I have. Uh, but Florence hates Jack Kyriak and again on the day that I bought this she was going on and on and on about how bad on the road again is and Maggie Cassidy for those who don't know was intended by Kyriak to be a part two to on the road again like it was originally written with the same character names but the publishing house was like no make it its own novel bring in more money uh, so the character names were changed. I have not read On the Road again. I don't think I need to. I think I'll just read this and <laughs> pray. Uh, I, again, I don't know what this is about. A plus booktuber. So that wraps up this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. But until next time, bye guys.